Listen while the makers of Rexall drug products and 10,000 independent Rexall family druggists bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, private detective. This is your Rexall family druggist, welcoming you for the 10,000 independent druggists who have made the word Rexall part of our own store names. We've done that because we believe in the 2,000 or more drug products made by the Rexall Drug Company and confidently recommend them to our customers. A good example is Plenamins, Rexall's famous multivitamin capsules. Handy, economical Plenamins give you more than your daily minimum requirement of every vitamin for which such requirements have been established, plus valuable liver concentrate and iron. Ask for Plenamins at Rexall drugstores everywhere. And remember, you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. Now your Rexall family druggist brings you a half hour with Richard Diamond, private detective, starring Dick Powell. Diamond Detective Agency, guard against throat scratch, enjoys smoother strangling. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, I'm disgusting. No, only when you're too busy to stop by and see me. Well, I was just going to call you, Helen, baby. Oh, I'll bet. Cross my heart. Hope to lose my skate key. You mean New York's gift to the detective world was really thinking about rural me? Rural you is a mighty interesting subject for rural me to think about. Why don't you stop being so spiritual and give your thoughts the benefit of some action? And just what exactly do you suggest? Spend the bottle? Mm. Post office? Mm. A romantic ride through Central Park in a hansom? Yes. Hmm. How would you like to go to the theater tomorrow night? Inside, or are we going to stand out in front and get a between-acts description from the usher? I only made you do that once, and from all reports, it was a pretty bad play. What's the one we're seeing? Very bad, but I was given two tickets. I refuse to sit in the back of the balcony again. I keep getting the bends. Oh, Fourth row center. Mm-hmm. Must be a bad choice. I got a couple of friends working at it. Going to close in two days. Mr. Diamond? Uh, hold it, Helen. People are running in. My name is Diana Campbell. Client? Well, I... Uh, Rick? It was hard to say. That's a wonderful thought. I'll see you tonight. I'll bet it's an attractive girl. Mm. You win, hands down. Bye. Now, uh, Miss Campbell, what can I do for you? Mr. Diamond, you've got to help me. Something terrible has happened... I don't know if I'm doing the right thing by coming here, but I... Well, I had to do something. I'm sorry, Miss Campbell. Now, if you'll put the symptoms in alphabetical order... You must promise not to go to the police after I've told you. Oh, one of those. It's for her sake, not mine. Whose sake? Promise me first. I promise to say goodbye if I'm not interested. Mr. Diamond, my aunt is Mrs. Martha Campbell. You've probably heard of her. Martha Campbell? Oh, isn't she the old gal who sells all that silver to Fort Knox? Yes, that's right. Martha Campbell is my aunt. Well, goody for you. She's been kidnapped. Why didn't you go to the police? Well, no, no, we can't do that. They threatened to kill her. I received the ransom note early this morning. They want $50,000 left at a location in Central Park tonight. Why'd you come see me? My fiance, Ira Stewart, has offered to deliver the ransom. Oh, I see. You're afraid that Ira might try to get his name in the papers and wind up under obituaries, is that it? Yes, I'm afraid. He has a gun permit, and... Well, I- I've never seen a man get as furious as Ira did when this happened. I want you to go with him and see that he comes back safely. Yeah, but tell me, why is this Ira so concerned over Aunt Martha's welfare? Well, you don't understand. Ira loves Aunt Martha as much as I do. And now that he's practically part of the family, will you go with Ira and see that he does nothing foolish? No, the truth is, the whole thing is a little foolish. Miss Campbell, if you told all this to the police, they'd reserve a few cells and Sing Sing, and the rest would be routine. I'm not interested in the money or catching the kidnappers, Mr. Diamond. Can't you understand? I just want Ira and my aunt safe and alive. I'm sort of shy around people who aren't interested in money. In fact, when she dropped five new $100 bills on my desk, I positively blushed. She briefed me. I was to be at her aunt's home by midnight, ready to squire Ira Stewart around Central Park. 
Then she explained exactly where the payoff was to be made. Of course, I had to promise all over again not to tell the police. I promised. Diana Campbell left, but her perfume lingered on. I could have sat around and let that order drive me to a cheap neurosis, but there were things to do. And the first thing I did was to break my promise to Diane. Well, well, well. If it isn't Sergeant Otis, and I'd be happy if it wasn't. Hmm. Otis. Wake up, Sergeant. Up with the buttercups. It's three o'clock in the afternoon. Hmm. Oh. Oh, oh, hello, Shamus. Otis, you'd make a hibernating bear look like an insomnia victim. Well, I'm tired. I've been working hard. I guess you got a right to be tired. If I had to drag those two feet of yours around all day, I'd have a nervous breakdown. No. Hi, you fatty. Who's dead? Well, there's been a nasty rumor going around about your sergeant. No, no, stop clowning. It's too hot. What's on your mind? No. Well, it's not your department. I need somebody I can trust. Kidnapping. Martha Campbell. The Martha Campbell? Yep. She's been snatched, and the retail price is 50000 The old dame's knees hired me to take care of her boyfriend when he makes the payoff tonight. Where? Central Park, 2 in the morning. Come as you are. Otis. Uh, yeah, Lieutenant. Bring me a map of Central Park. Get Lieutenant Davis. Tell him I want every detective available tonight. Prepare a special message to all units uh, of... Hey, wait a minute. Prepare a special message to all units uh, of... Hey, wait a minute. What should I do first? Resign, Melonhead. Get that map. Walt and I went to work on the map. We circled the payoff area and set up watch points for an army of plain clothesmen. Nobody going into the area before 2 a.m. would be stopped. But anybody coming out after that time is going to need a good story. It looked great on paper, but Walt was sadder than a Scotchman being held up. If anything went wrong and the news broke, the kidnapping of a woman with Mrs. Campbell's prestige would really upset the commissioner. I left Walt, taxied over to Park Avenue in time to have half of Helen's dinner, spent the rest of the time before midnight with her, and then left to keep my date at a Greystone mansion on the west side. Mr. Diamond, I'm glad you're here. Come right in. My fiancé's in the study. What did he say about my coming over here? I, well, I haven't told him yet. I, I thought it might be better if... if... Well, don't you ever do anything the easy way? <laughs> Ira, I, I'd like to have you meet Mr. Diamond. What? Oh. Diane, tonight of all nights to have a guest over. Uh, Mr. Diamond, I'm very glad to meet you, but... Uh, well, you'll have to go now. I'm sorry. <laughs> Ira Stewart was a blonde, well-built young guy in loose brown tweeds. He seemed to have trouble finding a place for his hands, and I half got the idea he'd like to try my jaw. Ira, Mr. Diamond is here to help us. What? I hired him to go with you tonight. He's a private detective. Even my best friends don't know. Glad to meet you, Mr. Stewart. Diane, have you gone mad? Do you know what would happen to Aunt Martha if those men found out? Oh, relax, Stewart. Nothing's going to happen to anyone unless you force me to make an exception. Diamond, I... Please, darling, I couldn't stand the thought of you going to see those men alone. We didn't know how many there are or what they might do. I've got all the protection I need right here in my pocket. Famous last words. Look, Buffalo Bill, I'll give you a clue. The kind of guys you've got to date with tonight don't take ten paces before the turn and shoot. You could be buried in that suit, gun and all. Now, look here, Diana. Uh, it's getting late. Uh, I'd better get the money. We followed Diane up a winding staircase and into Mrs. Campbell's bedroom. This little nook was somewhat smaller than Grand Central Station with an acre of bed in the middle. The bed had talent because all Diane had to do was push a little button and it slid about a yard away from the wall and exposed the neatest little wall safe this side of the First National Bank. Diane fingered the combination and a minute later, I found out whose picture is on a $1,000 bill. There were 50 prints. Here, Diane, put the money in this bag. It's one thirty, Stuart. I'm ready. Ira, please be careful. Please, both of you. Glad I made the team. Let's go. Central Park by moonlight. Bad night to be stag. Well, we're almost there. I'll have to park here. Must be among that clump of trees up ahead. Now, keep close to it. And don't get any ideas about shooting anybody. It might turn out to be me, and I'd squeal on you. 
We both went into a crouch and edged forward. There was a small clearing between the trees which the moon had turned into a silver pancake. I might have enjoyed it, except that Stuart was as nervous as an old maid looking at a calendar. Uh, did you hear anything? Oh, sounds like a revolution in the insect world. You stay here. I'll go through this hedge and have a look. Uh, maybe I'd better come with you. No, 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 no. You stay here. Diamond! Ooh! <laughs> Something caught me hard and neat behind the ear, and I jackknifed into a face full of Mother Earth. Don't let anyone tell you it's nice to get away from things for a while. I didn't like it a bit. I was far, far away. I don't know how long my beauty nap lasted, but the first thing I felt was an elevator starting around my heels and roaring up. When it burst through the top of my head, I awoke. For the next few minutes, I felt like my head was a ball and the rest of me was a drunken seal trying to keep it balanced. Then I saw Stuart, stretched out the way I had been. The copycat. He was bleeding from what was going to be a nasty scar on his forehead. A hunk of pipe was lying nearby. I went to work on him. All right, all right, Stuart. Rise and shine, rise and shine. Oh, come on, just not used to it. I make it a point to have my head cracked at least once a week. Oh. What happened? Oh. Last one out talks first. That's you. Yeah. Now I remember. There were two of them. One started for you and I yelled. Check. Then I heard one of them say, get him, Bob. And then you were shaking me. Diamond. The bag. The money's gone. <laughs> So it was. It was time to give Walt part of my headache. Stuart and I stumbled back to the car. There was someone in the front seat. I pulled the door open and found myself face to face with a kidnapped Mrs. Martha Campbell. She was dead. Before we continue with the adventures of Richard Diamond, private detective, here's your Rexall family druggist. There are two important facts I'd like you listeners to remember about Rexall aspirin. First, each Rexall aspirin tablet contains five full grains of pure aspirin. And second, there's no faster-acting aspirin made. Oh, but what exactly do you mean by fast-acting? Well, ma'am, aspirin itself is too fine to hold together in tablet form. So it has to be bound with an ingredient that will quickly disintegrate. That is, break up the tablet. So the aspirin itself will immediately be free to do its job. You mean the aspirin doesn't do any good until it's free from the tablet? Right. And that's why Rexall scientists developed a binder so low in moisture content, it begins to break up the very second it touches water. Now that means that when swallowed with water, the aspirin in a Rexall tablet is free to go to work for you, even before it reaches your stomach. Well, that's fast enough for me. And it's fast enough for 10,000 family druggists. Quality like that is what we're talking about when we tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. And now back to tonight's adventure with Richard Diamond, Private Detective, starring Dick Powell. Finding Mrs. Campbell dead in the front seat was the ugly end of another beautiful day. I hadn't known the little gray-haired woman personally, but from her reputation, I had the hunch that some of this town's best charity groups would be in mourning come tomorrow. And just in case I wasn't feeling bad enough, Stuart was right in there to help me. I never should have let you come. It's your fault she's dead. You did it. You did it. Thank you, Sherlock Holmes. Now shut up. You were going to protect me. <laughs> you were going to... <laughs> I slapped five fingers of artificial sunburn into his face and shut him up. Then I checked Mrs. Campbell's corpse. She'd been murdered at least 24 hours before. I lifted her featherweight body and stretched her out in the back seat. Ira was still rubbing his cheek when I pushed him into the car. Now, what about those two guys, Stuart? Oh, now I slapped you back there for your own good. Did you get a look at those guys? 
It was too dark. One was big and heavy, the other was thin. Could you identify them if you saw them again? Yes, I think so. What's that on the road ahead? Someone's waving a light. That's no, the police. Just step from that car quietly, you. Otis, it's me, Diamond. Rick, that's you? No sign of any kidnappers yet. Not kidnappers, Walt. Murderers. Huh? Exhibit A is on the back seat. Come on, Otis. Open the door. Oh, vicious. Oh, Head bashed in. What are the police doing here, Diamond? I thought... Don't brag. You didn't think. Otherwise, you'd have gone straight to the police in the first place. What about the money? I don't care about the money. Mrs. Campbell is dead, and that's all that matters. Well, I'm sorry about that, Mr. Stewart. Uh, look, it might be a good idea for you to be with your fiancé, Miss Campbell, before she hears the news on the radio. Uh, we'll take care of things here. Oh. Yes, of course, Diane. Yeah, I'm sorry, Lieutenant, about my behavior. You understand. And Mr. Diamond, I'll I... forget it. I've got a head that knows just how you feel. Once Stuart was gone, I gave Walt a lowdown and we settled down to work. We gave the two killers an hour to try a break. And then Walt passed a signal along to his men and the ring began to close in. We beat the bushes, turned lights in the trees, and kicked over rocks, even the small ones. But by the time we reached the payoff spot, we'd found nothing out but each other. Now, that's impossible. Are you men sure you didn't miss anything? Double-checked all down the line, Lieutenant. They couldn't have gotten through. Take it easy, Walt. Time now for cool heads and dull little dragnet. Otis, I want you to start picking up Muggs wholesale. Right, Lieutenant. Anybody who even thinks twice before he answers, bring him in. I want this town covered from the Harlem River to the Battery. Now do it. Otis waddled away, and I drove back to police headquarters with Walt. Soon, Manhattan Island was tucked under a blanket of blue as the biggest police force in the world went to work. The next day, I took a stroll through Central Park for another look at the spot where Stuart and I had been slugged. I found one possible witness, but he wouldn't talk. Probably because he didn't know how. He happened to be an English sparrow. Late in the afternoon, I dropped back to see Walt. He was in his shirt sleeves, hunched over a desk piled high with notes, reports, and cigarette butts. Neither of us had gotten any sleep the night before, but he was advertising it. Oh, Rick, I could kick myself. I ought to turn in my badge. We should have had those guys. Nothing in the lineup? No, oh, I've been looking at drunks, ex-cons, and two-bit hoodlums all day, and they're all clean. If someone tried to sell me an invisible man routine, I'd be willing to listen. Well, if you keep banging your head against a stone wall, your eyes are going to register tilt. You need a breather on this case. Look, I got two tickets for a play tonight. What about it? Are you kidding? I've got work to do. Oh, but Walt, the play is a musical murder mystery. The cop on stage is bound to have more troubles than you. Uh, yeah, I bet. Well, maybe you're right. Sure, I'll go. Thanks, Rick. <laughs> I'm glad Walt didn't ask any more questions because my supply of answers was down to one sorry shrug. However, this last maneuver didn't go over too well on Park Avenue when I dropped in to tell Helen she was being stood up. Rick Diamond, this time you've gone too far. Now, would it help any if I said it was business? No. Well, I suppose there's nothing I, I can do. I spent all day buying a new dress and getting my hair done, and then you walk in at the last minute oh, and tell me you... Oh, Helen, babe. Now, you stay away from me, Rick. Rick, let go of me. Now, in a minute. Rick? Rick? You dog. <laughs> Walt was ready when I dropped in at the precinct and we took off to the theater. After the show was over, we meandered backstage to see my friends of the cast. Turned out to be an interesting evening. The next morning, I called up Iris Stewart from Levinson's office. <laughs> Hello, Stuart. This is Diamond. I'm calling from the 5th Precinct Police Headquarters. Anything turn up? Well, it looks that way, yes. The police picked up two guys who may have killed Martha Campbell. Can you get on here right away? Certainly. I'll leave right now. Well, then run. Do not walk. When Stuart showed, we took him into the lineup room. The two suspects had their backs against the marked wall. Under the hot lights, they looked about as ugly as a draft notice on a honeymoon. Well, what do you think, Stuart? They look like the men, Lieutenant. We didn't do nothing. This is the parade. On oh, you guys, it looks good. What do you want to do, live forever? Now, Stuart, 
These guys are Willie the Knife Foster and Bloody Bob Ferguson. They've been indicted on three kidnap raps, but always managed to get off. Now, if you recognize them, you're an eyewitness, and they're cooked. Well, tell the big one to say, get him, Bob. Say it, Bob. What for? For the sake of your dear old mother in Alcatraz. Never mind what for. Say it. Uh, get him, Bob. Now the other. You heard him, Ferguson. Get him, Bob. That's the man, Lieutenant. I'm sure of it. Let me get my hands on him. I'll kill him. Now, oh, Stuart, Stuart, calm down. State of New York will take care of them. It's a lousy frame. You can't pin this on us. He was babysitting that night. Okay, lock him up, Otis. Right. Book him on suspicion of murder. Stuart, come into my office. I want to get your statement. After getting his statement, Walt told Stuart the case was closed. We congratulated each other and shook hands all around. Then Stuart walked out. We gave him enough time to get into his car and start away. A moment later, Walt and I jumped into an unmarked police car and played follow the leader. Rick, this case turned right side up too quick to suit me. What made you tag Stuart and plant your actor friends in the lineup? Walt, the trouble with you is that you're too modest. You set an airtight man trap for two unknown kidnappers and then blame yourself because the net came up empty. Well, he had you fooled, too. That's true, that's true. I'm ashamed to admit. But Stuart had a good plan. He kidnaps the lady himself, sends Diane a phony ransom note. Then with a reputable private tech detective present, <laughs> that's me, he gets the $50,000 and even bops himself on the head to make it look kosher. You'd have made a perfect alibi for him, Rick. But where did the old lady's body come from? Uh, he probably had it in the car trunk when we drove into the park the night of the supposed payoff. Hey, he's turning at the park. Mm -hmm. Soon comes the part we don't know yet. We should have nabbed him back at the station. I'd like to sweat him for a few hours. On what? The identification? So he claims it was a mistake. Could happen. The jury would think so. No, Walt. He's put on too big an act to fold under questioning. He's been acting ever since he made Diane believe he loved her, just to gain Martha Campbell's confidence. He's parking up ahead. Yeah. Now I'll let him answer the $50,000 question. And where did he hide it? He's heading toward that same grove of trees. We took off at a fast trot until we reached a hedge not too far from where we expected to find Stuart. We saw him all right. He was standing around right under the same tree he'd led me to a couple of nights back. A family of picnickers were close by, so he was acting like a guy out for some air. We ducked behind the hedge to watch, though I had to hold Walt back a few times. Finally, Stuart tipped his hand. He reached up past the nest of my sparrow friend into a hollow of the tree. It wasn't eggs he was after. The stuff he pulled out had that fascinating color known as currency green. That's enough for me, Rick. Okay, Stuart. Duck, Walt. Oh. Are you hurt, Walt? Yeah. One of his shots creased my shin. Hurts like blazes, though. Let's get that guy. He's running for the zoo. I'll get him, Walt. What a tourniquet around your neck and sit tight. Oh, watch out for the crowd, Rick. What the shooting did to that crowd, a skunk couldn't do in a bargain basement. They suddenly decided there was no place like home. Stuart was dodging between the animal cages now and still using his gun to discourage me. I sprinted after him, but he disappeared. That bullet went right through my only hat, but I saw him now. He was climbing along the rock barrier that backed up the bear pits. He made a lousy target because those jagged rocks and overhanging ledges gave him plenty of cover. He was trying to reach the road on the other side, and if I didn't do something about it, exit Mr. Stewart. I took aim. My shot clipped a hunk of rock just as he was reaching for it. Stuart pulled back too quickly and tried to step on some air, which never does work too well. He went over and down. <coughs> he never hit the ground because down in that pit, waiting for him with open arms, was a giant polar bear that had never forgiven the man who brought him from Alaska to New York. <laughs> to the cast party. Uh, thanks, Bob. Thanks also for the great acting job you and Willie pulled off at police headquarters. Oh, anytime, Rick. Glad to help out. Yeah, that's a nice tune. 
Is that the song for the show? Nah, nah, just fooling around. After a show flops, there's nothing like a little get-together to bolster one's spirit. Well, I certainly like the taste of your bolster. <laughs> so I'll mix myself another later. Rick, what are you doing by the piano as if I didn't know? You don't want to look bad in front of all this talent, do you? Oh, honey, not a chance. Just happens that Bob's playing around in my key. <laughs> well, let's do it. Let's do it, then. Count every star in a midnight sky. Count every rose, every firefly. For that's how many times I miss you. Heaven knows I miss you. Count every leaf on a willow tree. Count every wave on a stormy sea. Count every scar, and darling, when you do, you know the times I have cried for you. Thank you, thank you. I'm sorry, but due to previous commitments, I'm only available for stage, screen, radio, television, and parade. <laughs> Rick, you are becoming a ham. Me? Becoming a ham? <laughs> oh, my dear. Really? Again, here's your Rexall family druggist. If you suffer from acid indigestion, remember that Bismarex often neutralizes excess acidity in less than one minute. But more than that, Bismarex gives relief that's continuous and prolonged. Its scientifically balanced ingredients work in sequence, easing gastric distress and leaving a soothing, protective covering on irritated stomach membranes. Ask your Rexall druggist for Bismarex. He'll tell you you can depend on any drug product that bears the name Rexall. Good health to all from Rexall. <laughs> Richard Diamond, Private Detective, stars Dick Powell in the title role and is written by Joe Morheim and Hal Bloom with music composed and conducted by Frank Worth. Featured in tonight's cast were Virginia Gregg, Ted DeCorsia, Wilms Herbert, Mary Shipp, Dick Ryan, and Hi Averback. Richard Diamond, Private Detective, is produced and directed by Jaime Del Valle. This is Bill Foreman inviting you to be with us next Wednesday at this time when we will again bring you Dick Powell as Richard Diamond, Private Detective. Incidentally, Dick's turned writer this week. Pick up a copy of the August issue of Radio Mirror from your dealer tomorrow. Read The Adoption Racket by Dick Powell. <laughs> Hiya, beautiful. Get lost, Bristle Puss. You need a shave. But I have shaved. What else do you want me to do? Silly boy, she wants you to go stag. Go stag? But why? Because stag is Rexall's exclusive line of men's good grooming aids, like stag brushless shave cream. No fuss, no massage, just smooth it on, and presto, you get a clean, close shave. Your face stays smooth and whiskerless all day long. I'll do it, I'll do it, I'll... Go stag. That's it. Join the stag line now at Rexall drugstores everywhere. Yes, to make girls care. Go stag. Sarah Burner will delight you with Sarah's Private Caper tomorrow on NBC.